Hi, what's up everyone? So today we're going to talk about the difference between a lava mic and a road shotgun video mic. I do record a lot of videos by myself and I was using the shotgun mic before for the longest time. I got this like a couple of years ago, but recently I found out that when I start recording in my living room, it's really echoey and the shotgun mic is not really picking up my voice that well. And it's like all kinds of like ambient noise, my fridge, my like heater and everything like outside noise. What you're hearing right now, it's actually the lava mic that that I got from KNF Concept and it's a really good budget mic. Let's say at home mainly and you're recording yourself. I know that the shotgun mic, it's really convenient that you can just mount it on top of your camera. This is the shotgun mic that I was talking about. This is the Rode Video Mic Pro and it's not the newer version. I'm pretty sure the newer version is more advanced with the KNF Concept. It's now taped under my shirt that's why it's cool because you can't really see it but you can hear the audio and I can move around like I can literally move around like this and you will still hear the same thing let's say if I move out of the frame completely you can still hear me but with the shotgun video mic you have to point it directly to yourself in order to hear the audio another thing is if you are let me put this down first if you're filming yourself doing other things let's say tutorial or how to kind of video you don't want the shotgun mic to pick up your voice and not pick up your voice and that's gonna be really annoying because people will be like oh what's up with the audio it's like up and down and up and down that's exactly what happened to me when i was using the roll video my shotgun mic i'm not saying that it's not a good mic but in terms of my usage i do think the knf concept or it can be any lava mic it's better suit for my needs and it's working really fine right now let's talk about what you're gonna get when you first open up the boxes i don't have the box for the road video mic anymore because i had it like since a couple of years ago but this is pretty much what you're getting the mic and you have a headphone jack and you can mount it onto the cold shoe or hot shoe of your camera like on top of it if you don't know what a cold shoe is and you have a couple of buttons uh, you have the direction kind of blocking off some noise at the top that's how I understand the top switch and the bottom one it's for gain and this is really tricky when I first received this mic I didn't know how to set it up I didn't do any research at all so Recently, I did the research and I found that you should always switch it to either zero or plus 20. Turn up the volume of the mic itself and on your camera settings, always turn down the audio recording level so you're not using what they call a preamp on your camera to help with recording audio because preamp on cameras usually they're not that great when it comes to assisting the microphone always set your audio settings in the preamp or your camera to a lower level and turn up the level on your mic that's my tip that i learned <laughs> And that's a Rode video mic in the box. Uh, the KNF concept, it's a little bit more complicated. You're receiving multiple different units or different components inside the box. The mic is not in the box anymore because I'm wearing it. You will receive two boxes, one receiving box for you to plug into your camera and another one is a sender box. Let me check the name. Um, yep, nope. So inside the box, you will have two really similar boxes that looks something like this it's inside my pocket right now this is for you to send signal this is the mic or sender box and the other one it's on my camera right now it's on top of my camera right now it looks almost exactly the same it's a receiver box that connects to the headphone or audio jack of your camera. They look almost the same, but um, you can tell by having like a word saying mic on top of mine. And the other one says out. This is powered by two AA batteries in each box. It has a clip for you to clip onto your belt or your pants or anywhere. And it also comes with a cold shoe mount for the receiver box so you can mount it on top of your camera. So that's really great. You don't have to worry about mounting it anywhere. It's really, really simple, super plasticky. It's completely plastic, but that's okay because I want to keep the budget low as long as you don't throw it around. You, I don't think you'll break it. And you can select multiple channels. You have, I can't remember, it's like probably like four channels that you can pair with the receiver box just in case if you have other radio frequency that uh, intercept with your signal between this box and the receiver box. I literally just have it sitting in my pocket and you can't really see it as long as I'm not like standing up or moving around. And I have, as I said before, I have the lava mic taped 
under my shirt. Imagine this is my shirt. I tape it on top of my, uh, no, not on top, underneath my shirt. And I wear the shirt and it's now pointing upward. And it's picking up my voice really, really nicely. I tested before I shoot this video. I love it. And it's not picking up other ambient noises way less echoey that's why i switched and that's the beauty of using a lava mic when you're filming yourself when i'm even outdoor i can walk away from the camera and it will still pick up my voice or audio unless you have a crew or another person with you holding up a boom mic stand recording an audio with a shotgun mic if not a lava mic would really help of course you can't walk away too far from the receiver but it's totally fine with my kind of usage and I believe a lot of people would love to have this type of audio quality because that's the thing, when you are watching a video, the video quality will not bug you too much even if it's like lower quality, lower resolution, you can still continue watching it without like being annoyed. But audio is a big problem. If you have crappy audio, people usually just turn away and just watch another video even if they have lower quality of video because the audio is better. So that's why I really, really need a good quality mic. Let's try to switch between microphones so you can hear the difference between the lava mic and the roll video mic. You have been listening to the lava mic the entire time. So this is me wearing the lava mic underneath my shirt, taped underneath my shirt. You can't really see the mic. That's the beauty of it, but you can still hear me clearly. And let's switch to the Rode Video mic. And now you're hearing from the Rode Video mic Pro that I have mounted on top of my camera. And it's a Sony a7 III, the preamp, it's supposed to be pretty good already, but I'm pretty sure you can hear the difference. And again, it's completely up to your usage, up to your needs. If you want to use a shotgun mic for different purposes, let's say you have to shoot outdoor all the time and you are recording audio, not someone else all the time, not yourself all the time. Let's switch back to the lava mic so you can hear the difference. Again, this is the lava mic audio sample. You can hear me. I can move around. I can be outside of the frame almost. I can literally be outside of the frame. I'm walking around the camera. You can still hear me, but with a shotgun mic, I can't do it with myself because it's not going to work. I need to point the shotgun mic toward me all the time. And uh, let's switch back to the Rode video mic. So now you are back to the Rode video mic audio recording. You can tell the difference by now, I'm pretty sure. Let me try to bring the Rode video mic to the top of my head and you can hear the difference when it's closer to me. Let's try that. So now I'm using an extension cable I got from Dollar Store. Like, you know, those like 3.5 millimeter kind of extension cable. And I'm closer to the shotgun mic right now and I'm pretty sure the audio is better already because I'm pointing it directly toward my mouth. But if you don't want the mic to be in the frame, then you should mount it on top of you. I was using a mic stand, like a regular mic, mic stand to mount it. It's really ghetto, but that's fine. It worked. And I was having a mic somewhere around this point. That's why sometimes you don't see the top of my head because I don't want the mic to be in the shot. Uh, you should always point it directly uh, toward almost like the chest area so it can pick up some like kind of bass. Uh, yeah, the cable is really annoying. But this is to show you the quality of the rope for you might shotgun mic on top of my head. You can definitely set this up, but it's just a little bit too annoying to set it up by yourself. Let's get back to the lava mic. There you have it. A quick comparison between a lava mic and a shotgun mic in terms of different purposes. For myself, I would pick the lava mic over the shotgun mic for most of my videos because I have to film myself in my house, mainly in my living room, and I need to be able to record audio a little bit easier than having the mic pointing at me all the time, like trying to figure that like out. But if you record a lot of videos of other things, let's say if you do interviews of other people and you record things outside, a shotgun mic, it's gonna be way easier because you don't have to worry about pointing the microphone toward the subject or to the things that you're recording. It's gonna be way better than using a lava mic, even though you have the option of, you know, that short mic that you have in the box to pass back and forth between you and the subject or the interviewee. 
that's not gonna look good in the video. So a shotgun mic, it's for that type of purposes. I'll keep both because <laughs> I have them already, but I'll be using a lava mic more often in most of my videos, especially tutorial videos or how-to videos. And I think this is a really great option and it's a really low budget option as well, as I said before. It's about $130 when you think about it. That's probably the lowest amount you can spend on audio when you are getting a lot. I will link the product in the description below so you can take a look at the products yourself and consider like buying them for your uh, production. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas of what I should talk about next time, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you think this is useful, share with your friends and family. Thanks for watching, good luck creating, and I'll see you next time.